you have made it to the end of our CPL newsroom presented by Volkswagen 2024 season previews. This is number eight of eight as we get to the last but not least of our CPL clubs, Valor FC in Winnipeg. I'm Charlie O'Connor Clark. That's Mitchell Tierney. I have learned how to point the right way now hey, on this congrats. screen, which I'm really proud of. Can't say I haven't learned anything over the course of this experience. I hope you've learned something if you're listening. Anyway, we have, again, 10 minutes to put on the clock. Five questions to talk about Valor FC. Uh, I think we should just get right to it because this is a club where uh, there are a lot of questions to ask and hopefully answers that we can find. So the timer is on. Mitchell, let's start at the top. I think we're going to start before we get to this roster and the turnover. Valor have a bit of a unique schedule this year. Uh, I think it's their their first seven games of the year will be away from home as they replace the turf at not IG Field anymore, Princess Auto Stadium, I believe it's called now, uh, as their first home game comes at the beginning of June. Mitch, how might that affect this team? Uh, and is it something that maybe maybe they can use to their advantage this year? Yeah, I think that there is the potential to to use it to their advantage in the sense that if any club wanted this, it's probably the one that made 11 new signings and now gets the opportunity to travel across Canada together and really learn about each other um, to, you know, coaches have talked about it in the past. You get to kind of control players' schedules a little bit more when you're on the road and um, what they eat, um, what time training is, you know, wh when they go to sleep, all those kind of little things. Um, so I think if there's any club that could potentially benefit from this, it is a club like Valor that just had so much turnover the potential downside is last season, one of the biggest hurdles for the club was injuries. And obviously when you are on the road for that long, that does become a concern. Obviously you have to manage players and manage their fitness and that kind of thing. And we saw, you know, basically a week into the season last year, Raph Oheen, Matt Chandler done for the year. Um, Jordan Haynes missed significant time. Abu Smake, that, that became an issue for, for Valor. So they're going to have to manage that as well. But if they can, you know, find good results to those seven games come together as a group, then, you know, it's almost like they're going downhill for the rest of the season in a, in a positive sense, um, you know, in a more biking analogy versus like, I don't know, a standings analogy, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all like little resistance. They play at home for, you know, basically the, the back half of the season. And if they're in the playoff mm -hmm. hunt towards the end or, you know, even higher, like getting to play all those home games at once could be a massive advantage. Yeah, a hundred percent. And if they can come through this first stretch of games, not unscathed, but you know, in pretty good shape. What they play, okay? They play Vancouver, Pacific, Forge, Ottawa, York. So that's two BC games in a row, and then they do the full Ontario trip, and then they go to Halifax, and then Calgary, and then they're at home against Vancouver FC. So it's not it's not too rough a split, you know, getting to do all a full trip tour of Ontario at once, and then out to Halifax. If they can come through that in decent shape maybe still middle of the pack then i think that they are in pretty good shape heading towards the last half of the season six of their last eight games and four of their last five are at home which could be huge for a team that is ambitious about getting into the playoffs for the first time in club history this year as we move to question number two can valor find more goals in 2023 this team only scored 25 last year that was the fewest in the league less than a goal per game as well. Mm -hmm. Do they have in this squad what they need to score more this year? To be fair, I think there was more than 25 goals in the team last year. You know, they underperformed their expected goals pretty significantly. So, yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, Keon Williams had nine goal contributions last year. And I think he's only just getting started in this league. Uh, you add in the fact that he now gets to combine with Sean Hundle, who's a player who's proven he can score in this league and will probably be hungry after a pretty disappointing, honestly, second half where he maybe got moved to the mm -hmm. wing when Alejandro Diaz came in at Vancouver and you know kind of stopped scoring uh, over over the back half of the year. So I think he'll he'll want to you know Jordan Faria coming in had a good season last year with Toronto FC and MLS next. Uh, Jordan Swibel scored fifteen. Um, last year in Australia. So uh, he could be an option as well. You know, I still think they're, they're probably going to want to add to this group as well up top, but uh, you know, Mark Santos said, or sorry, Phil DeSantos said, uh, <laughs> there's one in the DeSantos jar, uh, said they uh, <laughs> are being, uh, 
being patient and, and wanting to wait to see who might become uh, available uh, as, as the season progresses, which is, you know, kind of how they got Hundel in the first place. So um, yeah, all that to say, I think there are more goals in, in this club this season. And um, yeah, I think that they will be a, a little bit more exciting offensively. Yeah. I, I think the the patient and prudent approach probably does make sense for this team at this point. Um, again, there's so many new players already coming in that, at this point, you kind of want to set something in place, build some kind of a foundation before you figure out where exactly you might need to add to this group. Yeah, because see what you have. Again, you, you, yeah, exactly. You want to see what you have, uh, and it's really tough to tell what they have at the moment for us, at least who haven't been able to see them in preseason yet. Uh, but we will be able to see them on the pitch pretty soon on Sunday when they play in Vancouver. But on to question number three with Valor at the other end of the pitch: Can they find a consistent back line? I know there were some troubles defensively as well for this team last year. You know, maybe not necessarily a lot of consistency in who is playing at the back, but they've lost players like Andy Baccaro, Clyde Cella. Uh, you know, obviously Andrew Jean Baptiste was a uh, club captain and he's moved on from the team. Uh, Guillaume Pianelli played a lot of minutes for this team, but with the players they have there, uh, and you can name them yourself because they are quite the mouthful at times. But do they have? Uh, you think a, a improved and maybe a defensive group that they can find some more consistency from yeah I, I think so i think you know one of the big priorities for them as was the case with a lot of clubs across the league this offseason was you know adding more of that cpl experience to their side and you know they get that in taz Mordacudis and roberto alarcon who are two players who do have experience playing in this league and will add to that back line you know uh, Harris Chansopoulos is someone who's played in in north america before in, in the usl championship and can add as well. And Temi Antonoglu, you know, another solid North American experienced player who's played with Toronto FC. Um, I, I think that there is a lot to, to like, you know, adding to Samake and, and some of the other guys they have there already, uh, Jordan Haynes as well. So, yeah, they, they do have a lot of experience. Uh, they have a little more depth there, I think, than they had last, last season, which is important. And again, a bit older um, is something that they really wanted to prioritize this offseason. And I think they've they've gone out and done that. And um, ideally for them, that means just maybe a little bit more, um, you know, consistency of lineup in, in terms of, you know, they, they had to change that back line a lot based on injuries last season. But And, uh, you know, even midway through the year, you know, they had to bring in someone like Clyde Cella just because, Everyone else was kind of hurt at that point in the year. So, um, yeah, I think that that's going to be a big key to, to their success this year is just finding more consistency um, at the back. Yeah, I think what I like about this defensive group is it looks like it's quite well set up to play with pretty attacking fullbacks. Mm -hmm. I mean, with with Antonoglu and, and Roberto Alarcon, maybe on, on the flanks of those two center backs in Chansopoulos and Mordacudis, who can maybe take that that pressure and they can, they can stay at home and, and be the cover needed to allow those two to play a little bit more forward, I think is quite an exciting thing for this club to be able to do that. Maybe they weren't last year. Um, so that's something I'm interested in. And, and again, they do really, really hope that they can stay healthy uh, with this group, because that obviously throws all kinds of plans out the window when you can't. Um, and, and it would be quite a, quite a blessing for Phil DeSantos if he can have an actually healthy team and, and be able to play the football that he wants to with the players that he wants to this year, that would probably change a lot. Question number four for Valor, which new signing will have the biggest impact? We've talked a lot about, or we, we, we've we talked all season about the players that left this club. Mm -hmm. You know, those being Diego Gutierrez, who captained the club a lot last year and was one of the best midfielders in the league. Matteo de Brienne, you know, one of the most entertaining left-sided players in the league. Uh, but we want to talk about the positives. We want to talk about the players that are coming into this Valor team. Which of these guys excites you the most, Mitch? Yeah, Phil Dos Santos uh, said this offseason that, uh, you know, Valor needs some new stars, like some new heroes to to step up, and the fans need some new heroes. And I think one of those players is going to be Temi Antelanglu, uh, a player who comes from Toronto FC uh, in MLS. You know, he's an incredibly talented guy. You know, I think uh, a lot of people have seen the clip of him chipping from halfway line for Toronto FC too. Like, he's got a bit of that star quality that, you know, they've had in recent years and a guy like Sean Rea or Matteo de Brienne, just that that difference maker. And um, I, I think at the CPL level, this is a guy who could really go on, you know, at 22. Um, we'll want to, you know, get back to a higher level. And I think he has every ability to do that and showcase himself in the CPL. And I'm really excited to see what he can do uh, in a Valor shirt this year. 
That's a great a great shout. I'm going to give a shout out to Jordan Swibel, uh, who, again, we've talked about it before. Anybody who is able to score consistently at any level of football anywhere has a trait that is really hard to teach. And he did that in Australia last year. Uh, 16 goals and 28 appearances for this guy. That's a really good click. If they can get him to to play at that level this year, then he will be a star for this team. And he will be something that they haven't really been able to say they've had in quite a long time, which is a consistent goal scorer. So that's something I'm excited for. Finally, wrapping us up here with Valor FC. Mitch, what does success look like for this club in 2024 after finishing at the bottom of the table last year? Yeah, I, I think... You know, I think this will be a club that will be ambitious and, and want to make the playoffs for the first time in club history. That'll be the, the goal. Oh, some lovely uh, some lovely music to, to take us out here. I feel like I'm getting played off at the Oscars. Um, you are, but you have, you have a few seconds here to finish this up. Right. Well, I think the other thing is they just have to be better at it's Princess Auto Field now. Um, Yes. That'll be an, yeah. That'll be another one that uh, I'll have to put a few dollars in the jar for over the, over the course of the season. But uh, the uh, Princess Auto this year, I think, you know, just three home wins last season. They have to be better there. They have to kind of reignite the fan base a little bit, and that's one of the quickest ways to do it is to play fun football at home. Absolutely, absolutely. I think this is a club that needs to just give give a little bit more back to those fans and and be a little bit more entertaining hopefully compete for those playoff spots. And I think certainly, as we mentioned before, if they can get through that road trip at the start of the year, uh, they have every opportunity to push into the playoffs and play well at home. Again, thank you very, very much for listening to our segment about Valor FC. If you've listened to All 8, thank you very, very much for staying along with us for this ride and hearing about All 8 clubs, which will be competing for the, obviously, CPL Shield and then the North Star Cup beginning April 13th. Uh, we hope that you follow along and watch with us. We hope that you join us on the newsroom after the first weekend on Monday, where Mitch and I will break down everything that you saw, everything that happened. Um, and again, we hope that we hear from you guys, everybody that's watching all season. Again, send us any of your comments or your questions or anything you'd like to see on the show this year. Uh, we are open to all sorts of suggestions. And again, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. And we hope that you enjoy the start of the season. <laughs>